cannot remember what that alarm was for. Yeah, nope. All right, so today you guys chose my makeup. So I went on Instagram and did a series of like stories polls and had you guys choose between two different items for each category. So in the end, you guys chose my full face of products that I used today to create this look. I thought it would be fun to kind of do this together, you know, have a little kumbaya moment. So that is what we did. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'll pop it in right here. So if I do this again, you can participate in the next one. But if you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Helps me out. And if you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. If you want to hang out, stick around. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so I have moisturized my face. I haven't primed yet though because you guys voted on a primer. This is the new Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I had a feeling this one was going to win just because it's a new launch. On Sephora, it says this is a hydrating, makeup gripping primer formulated with hemp-derived cannabis seed extract and blue agave extract for all-day hydration and hold. So as I go through these, I'll pop in the results so you guys can see from the Instagram poll. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you can head over there and do that. I've been doing a few giveaways. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what the heck does it smell like? Almost like bleach. Yeah, it smells like cleaning bleach. By the way, I applied my moisturizer about 20 minutes ago, so I shouldn't pill or anything. It's super hydrating feeling, and it does have that kind of, like, tacky feel, which I like for certain days. Sometimes I like a smoothing primer, and then sometimes I like more of a tacky base. If you have any flakiness, it's almost like gluing it down. This reminds me of the J1 Jelly Pack. Don't know if I can deal with that scent. For me to want to wear this, this would have to be, like, a life-changing primer because that scent, there's something just, like, super off-putting about that. The foundation that won was the Soap & Glory Kick-Ass All-Day Wear Foundation. This is a new launch from them. The Soap & Glory One Heck of a Blot Foundation <laughs> was real rough for me. That's one of my least favorite foundations ever. So I'm curious to see how this one works. I'm trying to find some info on it. So this retails for $16 on Ulta. It comes in 12 shades. I picked up the lightest shade 01, but I do have a tiny bit of self-tanner left over, so I'm hoping it's not going to be too light, but we can just warm up my face with bronzer if it is. It says it's lightweight, medium coverage that lasts for 24 hours, and it's sweat proof. Bottle reminds me exactly of my favorite holy grail. This looks like the exact same bottle. This one is shiny and this one is matte, but I think they're the exact same bottle. The shade on the palette looks like it might match me perfectly if I don't have tanner on, so we'll see how it does today, but... Okay, as I'm blending it out, I'm actually getting a little bit more coverage. When I first started blending it out, it looked like it was going to be kind of sheer. And now as I'm like working it into my skin, I am getting a bit more coverage. It's looking pretty nice so far. With a brush, this does look like medium coverage. Even though the base has a tacky kind of finish to it, it doesn't feel sticky to the touch now. Like it feels like it has kind of absorbed into my skin. And it feels good blending on top of it. Okay, it definitely goes farther with the brush. And it's looking actually a little more matte with the sponge a little bit. So far, no complaints. It's looking nice and just kind of like smoothing and flattering on the skin. I thought you guys were going to play me. I kind of played myself because I put this in there as an option. I thought the Fenty Beauty Concealer was going to get picked, but you guys chose the Cover FX Power Play. It was close. I'm going to give you my mini review on the Fenty while we're here because I've, I think I've only done it on Twitter. This concealer looks horrible on me. I also don't like the Cover FX Power Play, but I chose these because... Either way, I was going to try and mix them with another concealer to make it work for my skin because I know both of these I really don't like. I despise the Fenty one. It looks super chalky, dry, all around horrible on my under eyes. Would not recommend. This one doesn't look awful. It just, there's not one thing that I really like about it, so I never reach for it. And I also despise this giant ass applicator. Like, what in the world? It has a ball end on it. It's for, like, dotting on, but it's just... Not the most practical. So if I have a crappy concealer, my go-to for layering is using the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. And it just adds a bit of coverage. It adds moisture and like smooths everything out under there. So it's good for layering with kind of drier, crappier concealers. So I'm going to go in with this Cover FX one and dot this on. Okay, with the Flower Beauty underneath, it's looking much better than it usually does on its own. I have so many concealers I've been testing. Most of these are like new launches. So I've been thinking about doing like another concealer roundup kind of video. 
I only have like one or two that I actually like in here, but. All right, so for a powder, I was really excited that you guys chose this because I've been wanting to try this out. This is the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Powder Foundation in the shade 102 Fair. I am probably gonna use this for my under eyes. I love using powder foundations as under eye powder. I have very odd under eyes. Loose powder just does not work on my face in general or on my under eyes usually. So I find that pressed powders like the Physicians Formula One, KKW, Made Cheer, like any kind of pressed powder with pigment in it is what makes my under eyes look the best. I think the shade of this is gonna be good for my under eyes today since it does look lighter than my face. This would probably match my normal skin tone just like looking at my hand when I don't have the tanner on, but let's try this as an under eye powder. So I can definitely see a distinction. I'm pretty sure it's the foundation where the concealer and powder meets my face right here. Like I definitely need to set this part of my face with a powder now because you can just see like a major difference right there. And because this is lighter, I'm gonna go in with my Physicians Formula Press Powder here. Just to kind of solve that issue, I'm just gonna go right over here. I didn't bring my concealer right here, so I think the foundation is just starting to look a little bit weird around my nose. Looking like pretty cakey around my nose area now. It still looks good on my forehead. This powder, I would try again for my under eyes or all over my face. Definitely added some coverage under there. It looks a little bit brighter. So I had a loose powder on there just in case, depending on like what the foundation situation and coverage and stuff was. And these actually tied. This is the Joa Selfie Ready Setting Powder with the Too Faced Peach Perfect. I picked the Joa because I remember trying this one time and I think I liked it in that video actually and I haven't picked it up again since. And same kind of thing with this one. I recently tried this in a first impressions video and I really liked what it did to my pores and it just was like super blurring. I have tried this a couple times since filming that video and my consensus on this powder is that one, I hate the scent. It is like very strong peach, but other than that, it does darken my face about two shades, but also it does take away some of the coverage, which is usually my issue with translucent powders. For whatever reason, they just like take away the coverage because I think the rest of my face looks pretty good foundation and powder wise. I don't think we're gonna use this today. Maybe I'll take a little bit of the Joa and just put it around my pores since that area could definitely use some help right now. So I'm only gonna apply the Joa powder right here to see what it does around the pores. Maybe around my mouth area too, just because of the creasing. Okay, it doesn't look life-changing or anything, but I would say it looks slightly better than without the powder right there on my pores. So that's good, I guess. It doesn't look nearly as blurring as like the Too Faced one does, but it didn't darken it as much. If Too Faced made the Peach Perfect powder, but as a like powder foundation where this had like pigment, holy shit sees, that would be life-changing because it is super blurring. All right, moving on to brows, you guys chose the Revlon Colorstay Brow Creator, which I tried recently in a first impressions video. And I've been using this almost every single day since I filmed that video. And normally I'll use it after a brow gel, like I'll use my Sigma brow gel or Milk Makeup brow gel just to totally fill in my brows. And then I'll use the pencil side just to add like a tiny bit of shape on the top or something. But today I'm gonna use it just as like an all over brow pencil, which is what I did in that video too. I really like this brow pencil if you're in the market for a good drugstore brow pencil. I'd say go with this one or the Joa brow pencil if you like kind of like a stiffer formula. Brows are on, I'm gonna prime my eyes with my MAC paint pot. Someone on Twitter the other day asked how long it takes me to go through one of these. Literal years, like this one is soft ochre, but painterly I think it took me like three years to go through and soft ochre. I feel like I've had this one for at least like two years. Like you can see how much is still in here and I use it every single day. I swear by this thing and if it dries up, you can just add a little bit of Visine or eye drops or something in there. For bronzer, it was between this guy and the Hourglass bronzer. You guys chose Milk Chocolate Soleil by Too Faced. Mm, smells good. Because I have that Physicians Formula powder down right here, it's blending out totally fine. I was also really excited that this blush one, this is the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush. This is like a thing now. Buxom just came out with their primer infused blushes. Looks like a super pretty light pink shade. Doesn't smell like anything, if you're wondering. I feel like now we gotta just smell everything. Everyone's putting scents into blushes and shit now. Not super pigmented. I don't think that's gonna be everyone's cup of tea. I don't know, something about it I'm not totally loving. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm gonna keep trying that one. I had a feeling this one would win. This is the Anastasia Glow Kit. 
I am not a fan of Anastasia highlighters. I like the Amrezy one, but that was the only Anastasia highlight that I've ever tried that I liked. Personally, I just find them to be super overhyped. I feel like there are highlighters that give you the same kind of like blinding highlight effect that don't emphasize every single ounce of texture and like pores on your face and this just isn't one of those formulas. This is more of like a shimmer eyeshadow to me. Since I'm doing more of like a pink eye look, I think I'm gonna go in with Moonstone right here. Oh, they just like never sit on my skin well. You can see everything underneath it. If you don't have textured skin, maybe this does way better things for you than it does for me. The eyeshadow palette that one is by ColourPop. This is one of their new palettes called Sweet Talk. I feel like I haven't used a ColourPop palette in a hot minute. ColourPop palette is what to say. Here's the packaging. This is throwing me back to my magazine collaging days as a child. Okay, so we have about two options. We can do a pink eye or we can do a gold eye. I'm gonna give you a close up on these because this looks super pretty. Let's start out with Work It, which is the orangey matte shade. Next up, I'm gonna go in with whatever this shade is called. I C Y M I. I feel like that's some analogy that the kids are saying these days. I don't know, man. I'm going with that shade. So I'm going to bring this on kind of like half my eye and then into the crease a bit with whatever is left over on the brush. Now I'm going to take Meadow, the pinkier kind of salmon shade, on a tinier brush and blend that into the crease right above where I just put on the other shade. Then take in the other pink shade on the same brush. This is the Sigma E34 Domed Utility. Same thing right above that. And then using that same brush again, I'm gonna go in with the darkest shade in the palette. I wanna deepen it up a bit. Just got it on my nose, great. I'm gonna try and just go right over that. And on my Sigma E56, I'm gonna go in with Side to Side, which is that super pretty pink shade right there. This is that ColourPop formula where you press it in and like that happens. So I'm definitely going to wet my brush with this one because it's like just gonna fall all over the place. Just using MAC Fix Plus. And I'm going to press this on the lid. I'm gonna blend that out after a little bit more. Oh, that is so pretty. Super pretty shade. I'm gonna go and add a color right there to blend those two together. I'm gonna go back over with Meadow and just tap that right over where the shimmer meets the matte. Okay, I'm really liking this technique with like the smaller domed brush. I saw this on Instagram. I'm gonna keep practicing. I'm not perfect. I'm constantly trying to figure this shit out just like you guys are. So for the lower lash line, I'm gonna start with the middle pink shade again, Meadow. Then I'm gonna go with the darkest shade again on that same brush just to deepen it up a little bit. For liquid eyeliner, you guys voted on the Fenty Beauty Fly Liner. I don't hate this one. I just can never get like the smooth line like I can with my Physicians Formula, which is why I never use it. But let's go in today. It is nice and like super black. I just can never get like a smooth line and then it ends up just being like overboard when I go back in. I also threw a pencil liner in there and you guys voted on this Milk Makeup Long Wear Gel Liner. I've never tried this. I think I'm gonna smudge out the outside a bit using this and then probably put it on my lower lash line too. I've been really liking doing this. I'll just take my flat edge liner brush, this is the Morphe E43. Use that to kind of make like a softer wing. Oh, that liner. It's not blending out. Okay, you gotta really like pull with that liner. I'm gonna apply this to the waterline. Maybe it's better as a waterline eyeliner. Ooh. Okay, goes on the waterline super easy and super black. For an inner corner highlight, I'm gonna take this highlight by ColourPop, Smoke and Whistles. This is one of my favorite highlighters and shades to use on the inner corner. For mascara, I was really hoping you guys would choose the falsies, but you didn't. This is the Maybelline Colossal Big Shot Mascara. Really don't like this mascara. It doesn't do a whole lot of anything for my lashes, but we're gonna try it again. I am putting on false lashes, so I'm just gonna do like a thin coat here. It's supposed to be like a volumizing mascara and I just don't get like any volume with this one. It's more of just like a separating mascara. 
Before I go in for false lashes, we're going to use a setting spray. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Coconut 3-in-1 Primer Water Slash. It says prep, set, and refresh. It's basically supposed to be exactly like my favorite Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 spray. So we'll see how it is. This one gives you like a super pretty glow over makeup. I like this one for under makeup and over makeup. This was the other option, which I was really hoping you guys would choose. I can't wait to try this out. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save this for another video. I might just have to update you guys on it. Maybe I'll try it out on Snapchat or something. Oh, that mister looks frightening. Can you see those friggin' splotches? It smells really good. But actually, it almost smells like sunscreen. I'm gonna do it really far away so I don't get like splotches. Actually, that's weird. It feels really fine on my face. It smells really coconutty, like super sweet. And it definitely is a bit sticky, which so is the Too Faced one. I don't mind that. I think that did add a little bit of glow. I'm gonna have to try this one under makeup. I can't really tell how much that added. False lashes, it was between a pair of Morphe lashes and the Ardell Double Ups. So we are going in with the Ardell Double Ups. So I'm gonna trim these down. I always cut my false lashes. If you have false lash issue problems, problem with them like staying on, they might just be too long, the band. So make sure you're trimming down your false lashes if you need to. All right, my lashes are on and I am mildly obsessed with these lashes. I really like the double ups by Ardell in general, like just that line, because they don't feel super heavy on your lashes, even though they have a ton of lashes in there. All right, so for lipstick, you guys voted on this MAC Spring Collection Pinkaboo, and I think this is a liquid lipstick, hopefully. Oh, nope, this is a lip glass. Okay, so I'm gonna find something to put underneath this, and then we'll put this over top to kind of like add some pink. For my kind of like base color, I'm gonna use L'Oreal Tongue Tied. Oh, by the way, when I was applying the lashes and like looking at my skin up close, now it looks tragic here down. My forehead actually still looks really good, but the rest of my face looks like not great, like super cakey. Now we're gonna add the pink lip gloss over top. I love the packaging of this spring collection. Cherry blossoms, that time of the year, folks. Ooh, that was a good sound. I recently, I think it'll be up before this video. Yeah, I recently did a makeup ASMR video. If you wanna go check that out, I'll link it in the end down below. Oh wow, this is super pink. Oh, as it's like, ooh, those two layered look really pretty. Oh, I like this combo a lot. It looks like it's gonna be way too pink. Then it kind of blends out. So this is the final look using makeup that you guys picked for me. Let me know down below how you think it turned out. I am super happy about how the eye look turned out. I'm excited to use this palette again. I love that lid shade. All of the mattes worked really easily. And overall, I really like today's look. I feel like it's very, very springy, you know? The concealer and the glow kit, I'm obviously not a fan of. Wouldn't use that again. I'm also not that into this blush. I don't know, something about it I'm not feeling, but I am gonna try it again. As I continue to wear this foundation more and wear it throughout the day and everything, I will include this in a foundation update video. I do foundation Fridays on my channel if you are newer here. And every so often when I have like a bunch of foundations to talk about, I'll do an update video. So I will include this foundation in the next one. Everything that I used on my face today will be linked down below in the description box. My shirt is from Marshalls and earrings are made well. I always list my nail polish color, everything in the description box down below. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. I had fun making this one. It was fun for me to do like the Instagram poll and everything and just like do a makeup look together. You know what I'm saying? If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.